With your head down, you march, one foot, then the other. You try to block out the pain, the throbbing in your toes, the numbness on your face. Just keep the rhythm, you think. One, two. But the wind isn't so easily ignored. It claws at you. Whipping up ice and snow like tiny hooks, making every breath difficult. Your skin is thick. You always prided yourself on that. But nothing is thick enough for this. You are walking through the north, through the frozen wastes, a place not meant for living things, where only the hard and the lost dare to go. Of course, that's probably why they hired you. It's been ten days now. Ten days of plowing through snowdrifts as high as your waist, and there's still no sign of the town. You're part of a reconnaissance team, the first group sent in to check on the Empire's most distant outpost. Frosthaven. It's a place forgotten by most of the world. A tiny settlement carved out of the frozen wilderness which, for six months out of the year, is wholly cut off from the outside, isolated by towering, unbreachable drifts. But as of last week, just enough snow has melted off the Imperial Pass for a team to get through. So then, here you are. No one really knows what awaits you in Frosthaven. One struggles to imagine what sort of people could survive six months in a place like this. But whatever waits, you hope, at the very least, they've left a fire going. The sounds are what greet you first. The muffled pang of metal on metal, and a voice howling. It's difficult to make anything out with the wind rushing past your ears, but you'd know that tune anywhere. There's a fight up ahead. But a fight means there's people, and if there's people, then the town must be close. You gain some hope from that and pick up speed. A moment later, you hear more. A scream, the crash of steel against stone, a deep, earthy growl. You're running now. Your legs are wasted from the hike. Your shoulders ache from your gear. But the sounds are close now. And up ahead, you see the gauzy orange light blooming in the air. It takes one last push. You tear up the ground and take the last bend in the trail. And then you're there. You can see it. Frosthaven. Engulfed in flame. Everywhere there is fire, great petals of it bursting from windows and crawling over roofs. People run out from the town's ruined gate, screaming, their faces bent in panic and their arms pumping hard. Something is chasing them, and a moment later you see it. A massive creature with two legs and two hulking arms, covered entirely in thick white fur. Three gnarled horns crowning its head. Olgox! The voice of another pilgrim behind you shouts. Those bastards is worse than the damned Inox, if you'd believe it. 
twice as dumb and twice as strong. Then, as if to prove the point, the Orgox just inside the burning gate catches a fleeing outposter and hurls them backward as if they weighed nothing. Ten days you've been hiking. Ten days and this is what you find. You breathe out a thick plume of foggy air and hoist your weapon high. Time to get to work. You run inside the gate and the breadth of destruction becomes quickly apparent. The town has been sacked. Smoke and carnage and heat burns your eyes. Buildings have been opened up, their simple wooden walls rammed through, and their contents dragged out and smashed. Barrels, dishes, chests, everything has been hurled and dashed to bits. What structures still stand are bright with fire, and those that don't smolder. Their frames like black, torched skeletons. And all about are these creatures, these sources of havoc, howling in the chaos. A new enemy, the Olgox. When an Olgox falls, it does so with force. It shakes the ground like a felled tree and crushes anything beneath it. So when you drop the last fighter in this group, you do so with care. Seeing this, the remaining Olgox slacken a little. They know the tide has turned. They call out for retreat tilting their heads up and releasing a long, ragged howl. The noise carries over the entire town, and within a few moments, they're streaming out of Frosthaven like giant white mice. You lower your weapon and breathe. They'll be back, you're certain of it. But for now, you can rest. You wipe the soot from your face and take stock. Frosthaven is almost exactly what you imagined. A knot of grey stone and timber surrounded by sharpened palisade walls. A place where mere survival is an everyday concern, and where only the desperate and hard could feel at home. Thankfully, though, the townspeople are tough. They're already on their feet, putting out the fires and picking through the rubble. In fact, one of those townspeople is marching right for you, it's a woman, short and severe, with a fighter's muscular build and closely cropped hair. Her face is solid, like carved marble, but as she steps past some of the bodies laying on the ground, her face folds just a little, and she mutters something to herself. But she keeps moving, and coming into the town square, offers an outstretched hand. Oak be praised, she says, and crushes your fingers with enthusiasm. We wouldn't have held out much longer without you. You acknowledge the thanks and ask what happened. <laughs> oh, just life up north is all. She chuckles, but there is a clear pain in her voice. I'm Satha, mayor of this fort now that my predecessor and his lieutenant have fallen. As for the Orgox, they've been at us all winter. Took the months to break through, but they finally did. Probably killed a dozen or so of my men. And would have done worse if you hadn't shown up. You explain who you are, that you've been sent from White Oak, and relief creeps into her face. Well then, our luck has turned. She laughs and clasps your shoulder. Hard. <laughs> There's not many of you, but I'll take what I can get. Especially now that our garrison's been thinned. And as it happens... I have an idea. She turns and gestures to the town's smoldering walls. We took a beating in that fight, so if we're gonna survive much longer, we'll have to do more than just sit around and wait for the next attack. Her smile widens a bit, and you watch her size you up. 
With the state of our defenses, we need to be a bit more proactive here. I want you to follow the Argoks into the southern mountains while their trail is still warm. Try to find a way to slow these attacks. You feel her grip tighten and watch as her smile grows wide. We'll see ya. Now that you've heard the narration coming from the Foreteller app, I'd like to show you the app. So on screen here, we have a number of games in the game library, Frosthaven, Iso Ferian Guard, and Madera, all coming soon. Frosthaven here has a nice description of what the game is all about. You can find this type of description for all the different games inside of the app and inside this area once those audio pieces become available you'll be able to actually access them inside of the app itself super easy now there is a great example inside the app already for the isofarian guard so i think it makes sense for us to check out that particular one and we can actually listen to a sample and the full thing will be released at a later date so let's check out prologue part number one A cold wind bit into Yuri's face as he stared across the killing field. It made his eyes water and then freeze, covering his eyelashes in tiny ice crystals. Perhaps if he closed his eyes, the ice would melt and he wouldn't have to stare at the bodies. The Thalmundians lay piled up in the narrow pass where the Isofarian guard had ambushed them. For those interested in Gloomhaven narration, they have 1 through 51 currently, and the rest will be coming in the near future. So let's go ahead and check out the prologue. Everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in the Sleeping Lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods. Well, it seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken some important documents, says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him, just bring back what is mine. Based on Jexera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs <laughs> and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So, your target is the Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely place. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, keep on rolling solo!